Welcome to another edition of Regina District Industry Education Council Technology Spotlight. We're here in the Lumica office with Jeremy Foster. Thanks, uh, thanks for coming by. Hey, thanks for having us. Beautiful office, cool company, but tell me about yourself. What do you do? Uh, I guess technically I'm, I'm the CTO at Lumica Health, um, and we're trying to provide virtual health care uh, to the people of Saskatchewan. Wait, 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 you say trying to provide, mm -hmm. uh, but I remember a certain article that happened after the pandemic set in last year, how <clears throat> basically our government was we had no other option other than, oh my God, there's a local company here that actually does exactly what we need. Can you tell me about a little bit what happened? Yeah, you know, uh, we were trying to provide uh, virtual health care, but we we're trying to get on health plans on corporations that get a company health plan. So it was an added benefit. And that's a really tough business model. Uh, there's other competitors in the space already. Uh, and it was just really hard. Um, and we always like doing the, the you know, we call it a virtual walk-in clinic, where you can just see a doctor. On my phone, right? On like, your so, phone. So it's like, I go to the Lumica app, boom, I got a doctor. That's right. Yeah. That's really cool. Yeah. And then, you know, unfortunately the pandemic hit and we had this app ready to go. We just needed some cooperation and a little help from the government uh, and, and we, could, we turned it on. And what was the feedback? Uh, the feedback is amazing. The patients love it. Uh, anyone who's using it from the patient perspective just absolutely loves it. It's so convenient. Uh, and you know, there's times where the doctor's offices were closed. You couldn't even go to an office. And some doctors weren't prepared. They weren't ready for phone calls or, or providing care over phone or, or video. So we helped fill that gap really early in the pandemic. It was really amazing. Yeah, I literally life-saving. I, I talked to my one friend who was a nurse who was working at Lumica. Um, just the stories about being able to help someone when they knew they were at their worst or because anybody using is probably not in a good situation, but these people are, are sitting there probably in the warmth of their home or an office, but um, just being able to help someone digitally in that sense is so cool. It, it's pretty amazing that we can basically bring the doctor back to your house and you don't have to leave, you're comfortable. You don't have to put on a jacket to go outside. It's it's really amazing. <laughs> I'm like, this is a pretty obvious idea. What? How can this? <laughs> I'm like, wow, you put a doctor up. I'm like, this is incredible. But how did you start a little? How did you get the job? Well, it, that's got kind of an interesting story. Uh, well, one of uh, my friend, someone who I worked with at Gas Buddy uh, prior to Lumica, uh, was at the time working for the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. And Lumica was a partner with the riders at the time. So the connection was actually made there. <laughs> and at the time, Lumica... Uh, You're in Pill Country with a hot dog. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know whether they were in the stadium. Maybe. I don't know. Um, but the way it came together was, uh, at the time, Lumica was uh, outsourcing the, the build of the product. So they're paying contractors to do, to do the work and they wanted to create their own software team. So the conversation around, you know, that, that started there and there was a group of four of us that all worked together. We were excited. Like you've already done this once before. Yeah, exactly, I guess, buddy. So, you know, we got the band back together. <laughs> uh, and it was just a real exciting time to get, get together with uh, you know, myself and three others. Uh, and the opportunity was here to work on an amazing new uh, way of help, uh, providing healthcare. So when, when when was that? That was 2019. Uh, yeah, uh, late 2019. We started uh, coming to this office in December of 2019. Cool. What was it like the first week back with all of that original four? It, it was it just laugh. He just laughs. It was it was like it was awesome, but it was weird because it was comfortable, but we were in a new setting. So it was like a, like a dream because it's like all the same characters, but you're in this like weird space. <laughs> And it's familiar, but you're working on something entirely different. And it was just, it's just been a lot so of fun. You say leading a, a software team. So what a day in the life of, of Jeremy be like? What would you be doing? You know, I think we probably operate a little bit, maybe less traditional. I, I, I kind of laugh at titles of CTO and, and those things, but 
we're just all team members. Uh, oh, no thank God, because I'm intimidated. I was intimidated coming. Oh. CTO? Perfect. <laughs> like, it worked, it worked. <laughs> so, I mean, we sit there, we, we look at the product, and we figure out you know where the problems are, uh, where the pain points are for the patients, side and and then we have the care care team side then the physicians uh and and just make the product better cool so give me an average day in your life what would you you wake up at 5 a.m log into your email uh yeah 5 a.m maybe a little bit later than that yeah you know check email we use a tool called slack uh yeah. for for our internal communication so uh we, we discuss uh problems there or where we're going there business opportunities that could be one for students if they wanted to get better at something early on before they enter the workforce. Mm -hmm. Understanding how to use Slack, you're like the fifth person in a row that said their team communicates on Slack. Yeah, you know, you could even like start a Slack group with your friends uh, and just understand how to use the tool. I mean, it's just text messaging, basically. For sure. It's no different than iMessenger <laughs> or, or any WhatsApp, but uh, most companies use it. Okay, so before Gas Buddy, where did you come from before Gas Buddy? Before Gas Buddy. Was that IQ Metrics? Uh, yeah, there was, a, there was a quick stint in between. I was at IQ Metrics prior to that. There was a quick stint with our provincial government for a couple of years. Oh, really? In there. Yeah. Were you lost due to the government for a bit? Yeah, I, I, I don't want to disrespect <laughs> the government, but I don't know. I can't, I can't. Uh, I'm like, startup guy, government, I'm like, ah. I'm so happy though because. It was a really different uh, perspective that I that I I'm, I I'm glad I had in my career uh, cool. because it's been startups and smaller companies. What department? Sorry, did you were you in? Uh, it was when the government was uh, centralizing all their IT services, so it was kind of the early days of that project. Oh, cool. Yeah. So it was like the digital side of how the government was going to get online. Yeah. Oh wow! Never. I take that back. Like that sounds actually like a really cool. Time. It was actually really interesting to see all of these. Uh, teams coming together, you know, because there's you know some some ill feelings they had like, the way it was, and now it's a new thing. So it was interesting seeing that. Uh, we were also uh, I was also part of a project of uh, updating the uh, government websites because at that time every ministry had their own website managed by their own people, and they were going to a centralized content management system at that time. So I was a part of that project. It was super interesting. Seems like every government website out there yep. made the central one. Yeah. No one will understand how hard that is. Oh and my That goodness. is incredible. That's oh, <laughs> so hard. So hard. Like I couldn't think of a harder project. But I'm like, like, I have a lot of respect for you taking that on. Yeah. Um, because it would take a digital or, or to me like a CTO kind of mindset to say this needs to be streamlined. It needs to be scalable later on. Yeah. Um, but there's some efficiencies we need to create some outputs. Wow. Yeah. Oh, Trying to cool. like get all this content under one brand because every government website looked different at the time. So it was one brand and everyone, you know, everyone had their own interest. Like this is my important content. So you had to have a lot of hard conversation about what's truly important to that end user. Wow. That is so cool. So do you go to Saskatchewan.ca and have you have moments of oh that was a part of Lumen. Yeah, they've changed it since then though. That was a long time ago. So it's a new website now. So oh too cool. Um, and what other, before that, where, what, what was your first job? I feel like you've worked in such cool <laughs> startups that I'm like, if you need a guest speaker to talk about startup life, I'm like, talk to this guy. Yeah, you know, I, I was uh, fortunate. So in 2000, I guess maybe 1999, I was uh, carrying luggage at, it was the South Travel Lodge Hotel, at the Atlas Hotel. So that was like my post high school job trying to figure out what I wanted to be when I grew up. Cool. Um, and, you know, and this one day it's like, I gotta find a, a real job someday. Like, you know, I can't just can't spend my Playing time. Playing the, the water slides in that cave. That you <laughs> right, <have>. yeah, exactly. <laughs> no one will remember that. <laughs> no one will remember that, no one will remember that. So, you know, I was just like, okay, what can I do? And I just kind of like thought about like what my interests were. And, you know, I grew up at a time where there weren't computers in every house. There was no internet in every house. So I came from a different time there, but computers were always interesting to me. Um, so I actually found locally, it was a one year programmer analyst course that I took in 2000. And I was like all in one year, just immersed myself in software. So after that, my first job was, uh, I was working for $9 an hour uh, building web apps in 2001. 
with inflation, we should figure that out. You might've been making some good money back then. Yeah, it would seem like a, a massive amount of money at the time. I was uh, just rolling and getting it. paid to create websites. Yeah. That's, yeah, it's very, uh, feels good. Like you're actually, uh, you're like a digital artist. <laughs> I wouldn't say that. But, uh, <laughs> He's humble, that's cool. <laughs> I wouldn't say that. But it was an amazing time because the internet, you know, was kind of a new thing. It was uh, entering everyone's home at a rapid pace then. Everyone was getting online. And it was an amazing experience. It was me and one other person in a 100 square foot room uh, in a house on McIntyre Street, which is off of Albert Street in Prince College. I live on yeah. It's hilarious. Yeah. Too cool. Yeah. Small world. So I remember going for the interview and you go into this house and you're sitting in this room that's like no bigger than this and you're, and you're showing me what he was building. And yeah, it was, and that was it. Cool. And so that kind of got you into the digital world. Yep. Um, you did two stints at IQ. Yeah. That's funny now, Lou, with that. Yeah. You're literally like <clears throat> the most experienced startup person I think I've ever met, <laughs> which is super uh, cool. Thank you. Um, <laughs> So education wise, there's no software development, there's no computer science. Mm -hmm. It's this one course. Do you remember where that course was? Uh, it was a place called CDI College. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not sure. I'm there. Yeah. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, and it was just on uh, Albert Street, like Albert and 12th. I find, I find there's these small, like, call them colleges, call them smaller, like post-secondary schools, but they almost train people to get a job immediately. Like they give them like almost tangible, Here's what the tools you need, and you're not going to stay here for four years. Just go get them. Go. Yeah. Um, is it still around now? I, I don't believe so. It's, I, the other one somebody mentioned, it, it's not. It's so yeah. like all these schools that taught some amazing people in my community have disappeared. Yeah. And so I'm a little worried on the educational side of technology. Um, if you were to do it again, if you were in high school, what do you think you would do following your grade 12 year? Oh. A, I'm like, a, this is a revealing question. Oh, that's a tough question. What would I do different? Um, you know, I took a non-traditional path in, into the technology and it was certainly harder to start out. Uh, the, but I'd say the barrier of entry today is less. You have access to laptops, uh, pretty inexpensive. The tools for software development are generally free and YouTube has amazing content to learn and get your feet wet into software development. And that really wasn't the case in 2000, 2001. So the barrier of entry is lower there, but it is still, I think, harder to get a job without a CS degree or, or uh, the Polytech certificate or something like that. Yeah. Um, but it's not impossible. You just have to work just maybe a little bit harder at the beginning to get that first job. And then all sorts of doors open up. It was that first job that was hard, but after that, it was no problem. And, and how would you rate that versus experience? Or was that what happened after the first job? You got experience and yeah. then you kind of figured out the way to work. Yeah. You know, I met a lot of CS grads and, and learned what they learned uh, and what I missed out on. And, you know, and, and yeah, just took it all in. I love, I, I quoted you earlier, but it's the, the quote from No Rules Rules from Netflix, where they said that in computer science or in the software world, um, you could have somebody that's been in school for eight, 12 years besides someone that hasn't gone to school at all. And they could be doing the exact same thing and getting paid the same amount. Just because that's the world of computer science that anyone can learn it. Yeah. And like you said earlier, all you need is a laptop and an internet connection. Yeah. That's actually kind of mind blowing if you think about it. Yeah. Um, and the way you encourage the go learn using YouTube. Go learn. Go learn. Yeah. It's not, it's not that hard. You just have to be a little bit motivated and push yourself. When you're looking for people to add to the team, what are some of the things that you're looking at if you holding education aside, mm -hmm. um, what are some of the skill sets or things that maybe students should be looking at if they wanted to get to uh, say a role or, or something on a team that you're on? Yeah, you know, education is always good. I, I, I don't look for all the traditional ways. Uh, if, if, if you have your own app in the app store and maybe less less education, I... I, I like your resume is just a bunch of links that they've built things. Yeah, yeah. Just share, share what you've created. Just try stuff. Because we know we've all been there. We've all been inexperienced, so we get it. We get how hard it can be. Now, uh, a student coming into the startup world um, and you working at so many different places, what's the average salary for a starting uh, 
uh, either a CS, uh, you know, just an entry level computer science or just an entry level programmer? Oh, my date, my information might be a little out of date. Like but, when you told me nine dollars an hour. Yeah, I think it's a little bit more than <laughs> that now. Yeah, uh, that's you know, inflation has helped with that. Do you get uh, stock options? Or? Yeah, I mean, startups can be creative. Um, you know. And I don't want to say that all startups are the same, but they generally generally pay a little bit less. But they give an opportunity uh, to really learn on the job and access to things uh, that you know, some other you know, safer jobs might give you. So yeah, it's almost you're you're foregoing some pay to learn, mm -hmm. um, which in the long run should equal out. If not, I, I do believe if you're learning early on in your career, in the long run, you're going to have an easier life. I, I think so, but some people might disagree, and that's fine. Uh, I mean, there's money out there. I, I know jobs are starting at you know, you know fifty, sixty thousand dollar a year range for entry level. Uh, that first software job, which sounds like a lot of money to me, I don't. I don't. That's know. what I'm like. I'm gonna go back to yeah, school. I'm like, yeah. I got a company. Yeah, let's do that. <laughs> it's way more than let's see, nine twenty seven thousand dollars a year. So well, I. I, I just finished a book on Amazon and I talked a lot about they've never paid, like they still don't pay well. It's they offer stock options though. And it's more about the bigger picture of if you can act like an owner uh, and save a little bit of money here, a little bit of money there and act for the greater good, you're going to get a payout of a lot run. And you did say something interesting about earlier about business models now are a lot more, startups are a lot more inclusive of involving a lot of staff, whereas 20 years ago, you have one or two founders and that's it. Yeah, exactly. Uh, you know, I look at Icometrics and Gas Button that were both like it's bootstrapped. The the founders put in money and grew a business, so they didn't take on outside investors like a lot of startups do today. So there was no need to spread that out. It, they they took on that risk and they got paid out for that risk. Exactly. What would be the benefit to say a startup, say diverse? Because I'm guessing in business they're going to tell you keep it all ownership to yourself. Why would you give it away? Um, talk to how. Why would a company give ownership away? Why would you give stock options away? I like it. I think it creates that sense of ownership and you belonging that, you know, that's like kind of the beautiful thing about startup life is that you can feel like you're really part of it yeah. and you have your say and you help shape and guide it. So I think, uh, you know, that the stock options just add to that. It sounds it's like it's almost like a filtering mechanism for people that aren't team players too. Like if you don't care about the future of the company, get off the bus. Like I feel, I feel yeah. like that it should be a way to incentivize the behavior of people wanting to grow and wanting to be a part of something bigger than themselves. Yeah, I, I'm yeah. Like, that's too philosophical. Yeah, I would agree. <laughs> like on, yeah, on the surface of that. I mean, yeah, I mean that's that's kind of what you want, right? For sure, for sure. Um, tell me a little bit about your your life. Do you have hobbies? When I ask you that, you joke. <laughs> yeah. I have two kids, Jeff. Yeah, <laughs> um, I do some light parenting uh, after work. Uh, but yeah, you know. It, you know, when I was younger, uh, I would write code in my spare time, but that kind of goes away in time with you know parenting. I love golfing. Uh, it's like one of my. We're gonna go golfing. Yeah, we're gonna totally hook <laughs> it up. Hook it up. Um, but yeah, you know, it just I still like video games. I still play video games with uh, friends. So and the studies are out. It doesn't rot our brains or turn us on to violence. Yeah, I don't think so. <laughs> um, what gets you excited about working here? What uh, what makes you smile in the morning? It's just uh, helping people, like people that really need help. Uh, that's an amazing feeling, uh, knowing that we're making that kind of difference. Got a little of that with Gas Buddy, like helping people save money, and that matters yeah. as well. But with health healthcare, it's really amazing to know that we're connecting people that maybe didn't have access to, to a doctor. So sometimes finally, uh, family doctors are. Uh, sometimes you have kids at home, you know, it's hard to leave the house. I'm just thinking like a foot of snow out there, um, just think of the older generation. It's not easy just to leave your, wherever you're living. Um, so that's, honestly, I really look up to Lumica for doing, because it's such a cool story. Yeah. Um, I'm like, it sounds really bad. I'm like, I want you guys to get busier. <laughs> Wait, no, I don't want everybody to get sick. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> it's both of those. It's really hard. <laughs> it's both of those. I'm like, your marketing strategy, like, that, that's hard. Yeah. <laughs> Think of us when you're at your worst. Yeah, we'll take care. Yeah, we'll, we'll try and help. Um, doing what you do, I feel like you could have easily gone any part of the country and done this. Why did you stay here? And why did you do? Why did you have all these jobs here in Saskatchewan? Oh, I did I stay here? <laughs> no, I mean I love it here. I, I love it here. Uh, the winters are tough, but 
I, I love it here. The summers are awesome. I, I don't know. I just didn't need to. I had great opportunities uh, with IQ Metrics and Gas Buddy. Uh, they provided those those opportunities that you would get at Silicon Valley or in yeah. Vancouver or Toronto. It provided that. I was fortunate enough to be part of that. I didn't have to leave. I love that. Well, and, and you were a part of a few organizations that have paved the way for the rest of us. I would say that 20 years ago, we didn't have options in the digital economy. Because of the organizations you were a part of, we actually do. Yeah. And that's why more so I think we need to kind of promote these stories and show that you could have a career sitting behind a desk or sitting in your office at home. As long as you're attached to something, that can be your job. Yeah. And you don't need to be a coder. I, no. Some of the medical professionals don't probably know very much about what you guys are actually doing code That's right. Yeah. Um, all they're doing is clicking a button or several buttons. Yeah. I'm simplifying a lot. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. Um, what other, uh, you said you coded a, a little bit on your spare time. I'm curious, did you ever build anything on your own or your own app? I own a lot of domain names with like great intentions, uh, but <laughs> you're like I were to read about somebody needs to buy the yeah. three the three letter domains and you have them. I have a four letter domain. I have one from from the early two thousands that I've been holding on to. I judge people's websites based on how many words they have in them based on how they got on the internet. Yeah. And I, the other day it was one word domain. I'm like, oh, you you must have been around for a while. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, that's cool. But nothing, nothing exciting. Um, but it certainly helps with jobs. I, I experimented with different technologies to to keep learning on the job. Like if there's something new I wanted to try out, I would you know fire up a, a project at home using that and be like, oh, this is pretty cool. I should maybe uh, bring this to the team, see what they think. So it's like you're using your own time to constantly push what's next or learn what's next. Yeah. Oh wow. I'm not saying you have to do that, but it certainly doesn't hurt. But when you're engaged and you're part of you know, that startup life, you don't mind helping out that way to help make it better, more efficient, move faster. So, yeah. I'm still fascinated with uh, the, the gas buddy start and people, the motivation for people to help. Mm -hmm. that's, that's still, to me, that proves the human condition is we care about each other. Yeah. Um, and to be a part of something else. Yeah. And they did it for free. Yeah. That's, <laughs> it's kind of mind blowing, but I also, like, this is the counterintuitive nature, I think, that people need to understand that humans are all about is that. We're not logical beasts. Mm -hmm. We would we'd rather volunteer our time and say, oh, I was a part of that. Mm -hmm. But then also we could reap the benefits from being a part of that group. Because yeah. none of those people pay full price for gas now. Yeah. <laughs> um, one piece of if you had one piece of advice to tell a high school student, um, like what's the one piece of advice that's gonna help them out for their career going forward? Would you have one thing? For software? Um, let's see. I would say just Start, try something, go to YouTube, look for uh, you know, iOS Development 101. There's so many great resources out there that, uh, that can just help you get started. Just try it out. Uh, there's local groups, there's Hacker Gina locally that you can get engaged and ask questions uh, on Slack. Because you'd like. <laughs> I'm so, guessing when you guys are hiring, you're not just taking a resume from someone. You probably have already met them at an event. You've probably seen what they've done. And I really love what you said about if you're if you're trying to get a job, like build something. You're, you're going to need to send a link or something that's physical. Mm -hmm. I get that because in our world, that's what I like to see. Um, like, <laughs> Mars was hired because of her Instagram account. <laughs> perfect. That's a perfect example. Um, so yeah, just build something. Okay, that's cool. So you had you have two kids. I have two oh, boys. Two boys. They're uh, nine and almost six. I'm very curious. Do they are they coding it? Uh, my older son, are you yeah. Pushing? You're yeah. pushing. <laughs> uh, my older son and I, we uh, we work on on his web page together. Oh, that's super yeah. cool. So uh, we I've, I've started teaching him some HTML. Uh, that's awesome. Yeah. We've done some of the micro bit programming as well. Uh, we've taken some of the Canada Learning Code. Uh, oh wow! Days that are uh, that are put out. I love it. Your nine-year-old has the website. <laughs> That's how it should be. Yep. He's gonna teach his computer science class in high school. Maybe I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is too cool. Uh, tell me a little bit more about Lumica. What, uh, like, what's the next big step? What's the future hold? Uh, are we right. only Saskatchewan or are you Canada-wide? Uh, we're only Saskatchewan. Uh, we really want to focus on our market here. Uh, it's maybe a little underserved. In the virtual healthcare space, um, we have uh, so many opportunities. We're we're reaching out. We want, really want to connect family doctors to their patients. 
So uh, we've been working on tools to, to help provide that. Cool. Because uh, we know the family doctors will provide the best level of care. Uh, so we want to do that. So if I'm a family doctor, can I contact you guys to be a part of your platform and then I can reach out to my people and have checkups? That's right. Yeah, uh, we're, we're, we're getting uh, different types of healthcare professionals, mental health professionals. Uh, so we're, we're branching out, which is really exciting. Now explain to me, it's going to be a blizzard tomorrow. I'm a little bit worried. I've been coughing all day. Do I just go to the app and do I have to pay anything? Like, explain the process. Yeah, no, uh, if you have a valid Saskatchewan health card. I was going to say, I need my health card. Though. Yeah, you need your health card. Yeah. Oh, wait, so, gosh, yeah. Yeah, if you have a valid health, uh, Saskatchewan health card, it's just like going to any other sort of walk-in clinic or your family clinic. Uh, yeah, you just have to have a valid health card. Cool. And then you schedule a meeting, and then within how many days can I book in? Uh, I'm not sure the exact wait times right now, but it's pretty quick. It's usually the next day at, at Worst right now. Oh, wow. Usually, give or take, depending how busy it is. But sometimes it can be right away, depending on, on how busy And from it is. that, is there a prescription to a specialist for to go to the hospital? Can they basically do anything that a walk-in can do then? Uh, almost everything. Uh, if it's, uh, I guess they can't operate on it. Yeah, <laughs> not yet. We need AI. <laughs> <laughs> we need those putting robots. <laughs> <laughs> what? One operation? No, never mind. Yeah. Uh, what they can do is, uh, it's really great for prescription refills, uh, maybe starting uh, the treatment of, of some new ailment or mental health. Uh, but they can they can send lab requests. So if you need to get blood work done, they can do that. X-rays, they can request those types of things. Basically, all the things that we actually don't need to walk into the clinic for. Mm -hmm. Oh wow! Yeah, if you're not feeling like that bad, there's a lot of things they can help with. There's obviously some that you need to see someone in person. For sure. And there always will be a need to see a healthcare professional in person. There's no question about that. But I mean, what I think COVID has done to us has made a lot of us, I don't want to call us hypochondriac, but we get worried very easily. Um, and we're talking the thing that worries families the most. But that's why I think there's like, that's a cool solution that you can actually just download the app, and talk to somebody if you need to. Um, the mental health one I think is really cool, but just because I, I feel like that, well, I know that's underserved in the market right now. Um, and the barrier to entry to, I need help, but I actually have to go talk to somebody. I, I guarantee it's gonna be easier to say, can I just talk to somebody out here? And, or maybe don't use my video for now, because yeah. I, I, I wanna just you know speak to someone. Mm -hmm. um, to me, I, I think I said the other thing, like everyone should have a counselor, or everyone needs a, even if you're feeling great, like even for myself at times, I'm like, I, it would be nice to talk to somebody. But I think that's what you guys are leaning into, is there's this new, um, like I really encourage the mental health side of things, just because, so many people around me, like that's the norm now. Yeah. Is they have somebody to talk to. Um, and unfortunately there's still stigma around going out for mental health. And now, you know, with this type of technology, you can do it from the comfort of your home and you don't have to leave. You can be nice and comfortable sitting in your pajamas if you need help. Yeah. So is there anything on uh, uh, like tracking those calls and to figure out if there's any anomalies or I'm thinking like software that's reading people's facial expressions when they're not telling the whole truth. Is there anything that we can get into like the technical side of? Sounds like we should bring you in on our brainstorming <laughs> sessions. <laughs> <laughs> like I want the warning on the doctor's side to be like, ooh, Jeff seems depressed because his, his head's looking like there's all these tells that the, the camera's watching. Yeah. We may not be there yet, but I, I, we can't be that far off. You guys are creating the infrastructure to make that happen. Yeah, it's like a, it's a wild idea. I hadn't even considered that before, but I, I mean, everything's possible. I mean, like that facial recognition or image recognition gets better and better all the time. Mm -hmm. It can it can help learn from those things. Yeah, it's certainly possible. It's almost like recording your voice after the fifth or sixth call. It's almost like the AI would know how you're feeling based on your tone, and then it could recommend something after. Like, yeah. like yeah, we are going to talk about this. That's yeah, fascinating. That's <laughs> wild. What a wild idea, but it's possible. And it's right there for us. That's wild. Yeah. And I maybe I no, I don't uh, luckily I don't break bones a lot, so I don't go to the doctor a lot. But I remember uh, one of my girlfriend's friends in Victoria, he he was going to the doctor like almost like twice a month, three times a month. And I just kinda did the math in my head about like, free healthcare. Yeah. Um, how much that's wasting someone's time. Granted, he needs help, sure. But he doesn't have to go and go meet. It could be just by it here. And I I just, I think this is so much more efficient and along in the grand scheme of things. Mm -hmm. 
Do you ever have moments when you're like, this could be huge. Like we're, we're sitting on a gold mine here. We just need the proper power to be to see it work. Yeah, I, I, yeah. I mean, virtual, virtual healthcare is the future. Uh, even when this pandemic's over, it's not going away. It's only going to be used in more and more scenarios. So it's the future of how we're going to provide healthcare. We have so many remote areas in our province that are underserved that it just helps. Mm -hmm. They just need you know, maybe better internet uh, and, and, and can provide that care. They don't have to drive two hours to see a specialist. Right. Which is the big argument right now with in, in a province that's so scattered. Yeah. You can't have specialists everywhere. It doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make sense. So yeah, I uh, future healthcare. It's the future. I like so I would just smile waking up knowing that I was working. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, books, do you read anything lately? Watch anything lately that you like? Oh, books. No, I haven't read anything. Where do you go, where do you go to learn? Where do I go to learn? I don't know. I, I, I just YouTube. You, you, you watch YouTube. Videos. There's so much great content online. There's blog posts. Um, there's so many things to learn. Even uh, actually, when I was trying to book you for this, remember you had a you're you're doing a yeah uh, the uh, AWS lunch, session. Yeah, you're yeah. doing a session. Lunch and learn with <laughs> the, the AWS team. So I'm like I. You've been in this for years. You've been at several different startups now, but still going to these learning sessions, yeah. still acting like, and I'll steal Jeff Bezos day one. You're still trying to keep learning. That's yeah. that's cool to see. You know, and I'm sure this is true with you know all industries. I I know this technology space best, uh, best, but there's so many new things to learn, and it's always changing. And it's both like the exciting thing, and sometimes you know it can be a little intimidating because it just moves so fast. There's always something new, but it's kind of exciting. <laughs> <laughs> go build something. That's, go, that's the, the theme of this something. Go build something yeah. because in the next five years, your resume isn't going to exist. It's going to be a GitHub link. Yeah. And that's it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. More and more other, other jobs will find more and more automation with like if it's accounting or marketing and all these things will have more and more automation as we move forward. Big time. Like even thinking about what we do. Like, you don't need marketing anymore. <laughs> okay, this was great. Thanks a lot for your time. Awesome. Um, Thanks, Jeff. Thanks I think the, the theme was go out and build something. Go I think that's build. super inspiring. Um, just hearing your story and the, the, the groups you've worked with and the influence you've had in the tech community, that's super cool. But I'm like, I'm excited for the next 10 years because this place is just poised to blow up somewhere yeah. that. Uh, the technology community in Regina is just getting into gas and really is getting so big that, uh, yeah, the future's looking bright for my daughter. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>